Okay. So this is the skull. This bone here in front is the frontal bone. That is the frontal bone. The frontal bone has the coronal suture. The coronal suture goes in the coronal plane. Okay, the coronal suture. Behind the coronal suture, we have two parietal bones, two parietal bones. Each of those parietal bones is separated by the sagittal suture, the sagittal suture. Okay, that's the sagittal suture here. Parietal bone, parietal bone, coronal suture, frontal bone. If I go to the side here, I have got the temporal bone, the temporal bone, and on top of the temporal bone, I've got the squamosal suture, the squamosal suture. Now, just right here, in this area, I have the sphenoid bone, a small portion of the sphenoid bone. Moving to the back, okay, just to recall, these are both, these are both parietal bones separated by the sagittal suture. Okay. And here in the back, is the occipital bone. This is the occipital bone. And the occipital bone has the lambdoidal suture. The lambdoidal suture. So called because it looks like a lambda. Now most of the occipital bone can be seen in this view. All right, so for the temporal bone, Remember, this whole thing is the temporal bone. I've got that squamosal suture. The hole here, that is the external auditory canal or external auditory meatus. Just in front of this hole, I've got a groove. And for some of you, it might have a little thingy on it that looks like gum or glue. So, but that divot here, that is the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone, mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. This whole thing is the temporal bone and this portion here is still part of the temporal bone. There's a small suture right here that separates the temporal bone from the zygomatic bone, which is here. Okay. This portion of the temporal bone is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. All right, so taking off the skull cap, in order to find the internal auditory meatus or internal auditory canal, you wanna look for this here, and we've got a hole here and a hole here. These are the internal auditory canals, or meatus. The only part of the sphenoid bone you can see from, from outside of the skull is just right here, okay? This is the sphenoid bone here. To be able to see the sphenoid bone in all of its glory, you've got to peel this dude's head off. So this whole structure here, this winged structure, that whole thing is the sphenoid bone. The two structures you need to know are the cella tersica, the cella tersica, cella tersica. These structures here, here and here are the optic foramina, optic foramina. One would be optic foramen. Okay, the optic foramina. Now, if I put this through, I could also ask you, on a practical exam, I could ask you the optic foramina in this view too. Okay, so that is the optic foramina. <clears throat> the ethmoid bone, 
has structures that could be seen in a couple different ways. The ethmoid bone, you have some of it you can view while looking up the nose. And if you could imagine, if I could just go straight up the nose up here, you can see that it's not very far away. Okay, so that's still the same ethmoid bone. So the ethmoid bone has a couple of structures here that you need to know. Now, if you feel with your finger, you'll see that there's something sticking up right here. That thing that is sticking up is the Crista galli, right there. Uh, right there. <laughs> the Crista galli, the Crista galli. Okay, it means rooster comb, so you can kind of feel that right there. Now, on either side of the Crista galley, I've got the crib reform plate. The crib reform plate. So I think if a crib needs to be reformed, it must be smelly, okay? And these little holes in the crib reform plate is where your olfactory nerves go through. That's your sense of smell. Okay, so that's the crib reform plate. And that middle point, remember, is rooster's comb, Crista galley, Crista galley. All right, now some more structures of the ethmoid bone that you need to know. This line here is the nasal septum, and there's actually two structures here. Well, actually, this is a facial bone down here, but the top two thirds is a structure of the ethmoid bone. So from here to here, the top two thirds of that nasal septum is the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. And while I'm here, we can see the nasal concha, the nasal concha, okay? And the middle and superior nasal concha are part of the ethmoid bone. So the nasal concha of the ethmoid bone. So let's look at some structures of the occipital bone. All right, so remember this whole thing is the occipital bone. All right, you might recall, <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. We don't need that right now. Okay, remember we've got the lambdoidal suture here in the back. This is all occipital bone and all this at the bottom is still occipital bone. So, two structures you need to know for the occipital bone. You need to know the magnum foramen or foramen magnum, okay, the big old hole and the occipital condyles, the occipital condyles. The occipital condyles are gonna articulate with C1, the C1 vertebrae. All right, so let's look at some of the facial bones now. So uh, the main bone of the face is the maxilla, and that all of this is gonna be maxilla, and even by the nose here is gonna be maxilla, okay, maxilla. In addition, I can turn this guy around. The top or the anterior, about two thirds of the palate here is also the maxilla, the maxilla. Okay, just this front part here, the maxilla. All right, so the cheekbone starts about here. This is the zygoma or the zygomatic bone. The zygoma or the zygomatic bone. There's a little suture about there, okay, that separates two structures from one another. It's about here. So this is the zygomatic bone or zygoma, and just this portion here is the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. And it's called that because it's going toward, it's actually um, linking up with the temporal bone. And you will recall this is the temporal bone, and this structure is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. So this is a zygoma, the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. This is the temporal bone, and this is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. So a couple other things that you need to know. Um, there's only one bone of the eye orbit that you're responsible for, and that is the bone that sits medially right here, and that is the lacrimal bone the lacrimal bone. And I have two bones here. 
Okay, those are the nasal bones, the nasal bones. Now let's look at a bone called the vomer. The vomer can be seen in two different areas. The vomer makes up the bottom one third of the nasal septum, so just right here. And the vomer continues to go inward and downward, inferiorly. And this right here is the vomer as well. All right, so I can ask the vomer here or here. And uh, one that I haven't mentioned yet is the palatine bone. So the palatine bone lies, let's see, about here. Okay. So this uh, posterior, like one third of the palate, is the palatine bone. The palatine bone. Here is the mandible. So um, one structure you need to know on the mandible is the mandibular condyle. Okay, so this is the mandibular condyle, this is the mandibular condyle, and the mandibular condyles articulates with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. Okay, articulates with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone. And this is the mandibular condyle of the mandible.